Hello and welcome back. And I know it's been a while since I made a video, so I am back with something really interesting. This is the effect that I've been working on for a while now. And for this video, instead of recreating the entire effect once again, what we're going to do is we are going to just go through each and every node. Do let me know if you like videos like this. All right, then let's get right into it so i've added a few controls on the right hand side if you see we can have a particles slash that that can be created as a trail whenever a sword moment is happening in addition to that i can just click on this button and switch it to curve slash and in addition to that when i'm working with particles now if you look at it every particle is moving in a straight line and if i don't want that i want a little bit more noise in that i can just click on this noise and now the particles are also moving away and it looks a little bit more dynamic, right? And you can tweak it basis of uh, what you like. Like for example, if I'm in the ribbon and I change the number of ribbons to one, so now only one ribbon is coming out of it. And uh, let's change it to 10, now we've got 10 different ribbons. I can also update it to 30 and it looks a little bit more defined, right? Similarly, when I'm in the particle section here, I can also, define what is the density of my particle that I want. So like, for example, if I change it to one, it's very less dense. Uh, if I change it to 15, it is very, very dense. All right, before we start, I want to say that this entire geometry node file is available on my Patreon. So if you don't want to go through the entire tutorial and you want to take a look at it yourself, please go subscribe there. It's only $5. Let's start with our setup, right? Now, before I tell you what the geometry node is doing, I want to tell you how I bought in all of these objects here and how this animation is happening so seamlessly. You can just hide this. Uh, and uh, so first of all, I created the sheet of the sword. And then I also created the sword. In addition to that, I also just got armature out of uh, Maximo. You can get them for free over there. So what I did is that I bought in the armature and then I used some constraints to lock the sword right onto the armature. And the constraints that I used were, if I go here, it is child of. Right. So if you use child off and you select the bone that you want to link this to, then it automatically puts the sheet right on the hand of the character. Now for the sword though, what I did is I used the same constraint, but instead of making it the child of the armature, I made it the child of the sheet so that it is correctly aligned to it. And then uh, if you find any discrepancies on if it's not correctly aligned or if it's forward or backward or the rotation doesn't align, you can just manually make some tweaks here just so that uh, it aligns correctly. And now once you're done with that, you need to go ahead and create a new object in geometry node. So let's come here and uh, let's select this and let me hide it. So what I did is I took a cube right and uh, i click on add modifier and then geometry nodes right so that i had a new geometry node set up in there basically i want the particle effect to be coming out of the sword and not anywhere else on the character right so in order to do that what i did is i bought in an object info node uh, and selected my sword here so uh, let me actually name it as sword so that you know what I'm talking about. Bought in my sword here and then I also added another object in geometry node which is called a mesh line, right? And the count of the number of points in that mesh line is the number of ribbons that we are using to adjust uh, the ribbons that we are getting while we are using the curve animation, right? So let me show this to you. Now, this is the number of ribbons and this is where it's coming from. So I took the mesh line and then I used the transform geometry nodes right next to the mesh line. So let me show it to you, right? Transform geometry node. And if I mute this, the line is straight, right? But I want the line to move along with this word because that's where the effect is coming from. So I took the location and the rotation of the sword and I plugged it into the transform geometry node and doing so aligned the line right onto the sword. And after that, I used a node called mesh two points. So let me plug that in. 
and now I have 10 points. I took those points and then there is this crucial step that we need to go through and this step basically ensures that when we convert these points into a curve, uh, they have a straight line and they are joined with each other. So what is happening here is that we are taking the max of the points. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the maximum ID of the point, we are adding a value to it, and then we are also adding the index to it. And then we are setting that ID back onto the geometry nodes. Uh, I think I got this set of code from uh, Cartesian Caramel. Uh, I think he also has a pretty good video on particle trees. I would recommend you guys to watch that. But uh, idly, we take the ID and then we plug it in back onto uh, the join geometry node into our simulation. Now we see something like a slash that is happening, right? What I want to do is that if, if your particle is older than 8 to 10 frames, I want to just delete it. So if I now play it, can you see that the curve is coming back onto one line, right? And stopping with just one particle with a fluid fluid movement. In order to do that, what I'm doing is that I'm adding a, a value here, which is one, and I'm adding that number for every points, every time it's getting created, which basically defines the age of a particle. And then I plug it back into the output of it. And every time a frame passes, it just keeps adding number one to it, right? And then I can then use that value here and uh, also add a random value to just delete those points somewhere between eight frames and 10 frames. And then the second delete geometry node is ideally something that I can use to control my simulation. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, basically, if you look at these two options here, which is simulation start and simulation end. So the way I have designed it is that I look at the number of frames and if the frame is less than 11 and uh, is uh, greater than 59 i want the simulation to stop or i want all the particles to be deleted so that's exactly what is happening as soon as it reaches frame 60 if you guys see it uh, as soon as i reach frame 60 all the particles are deleted and anything before 11 the particles are getting deleted as well this is our base that we need to create for our animation now that we have this what we can do is that we can take this output and plug it into a points to curve node now let's see what happens once we do that right if you can see, there is a line of curve that is getting created along with the trail of the particles. Now that we have converted it into curves, we can use the set spline type node. We can basically use the resolution here, uh, at, or I have named it curve smoothness, but basically it goes into set spline resolution node. You can use this to define if you want your curve to be jagged or if you want it to be smooth. Right, so I've kept it at 20, which was enough resolution for me to create the animation. You can tweak it and play with it as you want. This this is to set the UVs. I Even if you don't use it, it's fine. After all of this is done, now I need geometry on this, right? Uh, to be able to show, show the slash uh, in theory. So what I do is I use a curve to mesh node and use a curve line, which I then resample uh, to see if we need to change the resolution at all. Um, you can add selection option for this as well. I don't really find it as important. And then I plug it in into the profile curve for the curve to mesh. And as soon as I do that, it is now creating the slash. And I basically use them to create the simulation for the particles. And this entire setup is creating the particle uh, slashes. Right after the set spline resolution, uh, I added a node called curve to points. Now in this situation, uh, the entire curve that is created so far is then converted into points again. And then I can just essentially use a join geometry node to join it in the simulation and create these back-to-back -back slashes. After that, we can use a set position node. Now this set position node is not um, necessary if you have unchecked the particle noise, but if you do check it, uh, this is where this, particles going away effect is happening, right? And for that, I did nothing, but I just took the noise texture and uh, this these are the values that I've selected for noise. You can tweak it, obviously, if you want to. And after that, I've just used a subtract node and subtracted 0 0.5 out of it, which I'm using position and multiplying it 
with uh, making sure that the Y value is zero. And then the output of this goes into a scale where I just reduce the intensity of the position effect and then add it back into the noise. And then this is the overall scale to control the overall amount of effect that is happening in this entire distribution. Right after this set position node, I've got a switch node. Now the switch node's job is nothing but just to give you the ability to whether choose if you want that noise effect or not, right? So ideally, what I'm saying is that if you have unchecked it, then it will just go directly to the next step. And if you have checked it, then it will also do the set position and then go to the next step. So once we are done with this, then the next step here would be to, again, capture the age of the particle that we did before. And this is to ensure that we are getting a little bit more smoother transition. I use this age to then define the size of those particles. Now, if you look at the effect, can you see the particles getting smaller the older they are? And that exactly uh, what is happening here. I am using the age and then I'm using a map range node to say that any particle from zero to 30, um, this would be the transition between them. The size would be uh, from 0 0.02 to zero. And that's how uh, the gradient of those particles are gonna work. And we are also saying that if the particle age is greater than 30, then just delete that. So that's what is happening. And I've added another delete geometry node here. And this is the same simulation timeline concept that we have used right here, where we are saying if that frame is less than 11 or greater than 59, I want you to delete all the particles so that we just stop the simulation altogether. Uh, once we are done with that, um, I take the output of the simulation node and put it in instance to point. Node. And uh, here is where we can also add another another control where we can just select the particle altogether. So, so you can just idly select your particle object right here since you have the control here. Take that and we add it as an instance on the instance of point node. And for the scale, I'm using the radius because we're defining the scale here. And then we can use that same scale after we have we have come out of the simulation. I use scale instances to just add a little bit more random values in the scale and also rotate instances to rotate the object a little bit more dynamically. So if I show it to you here, right now I'm using icosphere, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. But if I go ahead and use, let's say, cube, and if I run it, now if you see there is a little bit more dynamic rotation in the cube, right? And just gives it a little more uh, realistic effect. All right, so once we are done with creating the particle effect and the curve effect, I use another switch node to then switch between uh, whether I want the particle effect or I want the curve effect. So I use another switch node and the switch node's job is to just switch between particle or curve. So if I select particle or if it's checked, the particle effects is in play and if it's unchecked, then the curve effect is in play. Now it's not showing right now because I have to select this, but idly, uh, this is what I mean, right? And the good thing about this is that you can change it in between and it will still work. And so you can just add keyframes and uh, make a more dynamic animation if you need to. And we can also have noise, uh, come in and go in between and a lot of other changes that you need to do. At the, towards the end of it, what I do is I use a lot of object info nodes to just bring in all the animations that I created before to have them in the geometry node itself so that I have a little bit more control on what I'm doing with them. But uh, I guess that's about it. That's exactly how I created this entire effect. As far as the material setup for the slashes goes, uh, it's going to be in the file and it's going to be available on the Patreon. Let me know that if you like this kind of format for a tutorial video. If you do, I'm going to go ahead and start making videos like these. But I, I hope you learned something new and I hope you liked the video. And if you did, Please do like, share and subscribe and I'm going to see you in the next one.